you clicked on this video, you're here for the truth about Steve Harvey, family feud legend. <laughs> Miss Universe or Miss America or whatever it was, legend. There's, I have to apologize. This is exactly what's on the car. It was on the car. The man who most people love and some people hate, legend. There is something about him that you probably never ever knew. This video is about the truth the truth that has been hidden from you in plain sight. The truth that has literally been on Steve Harvey's official YouTube account for over a year that has been seen by over a million people. So my point is, it's not very much a secret. But I'm gonna clue you in on this fact. Steve Harvey, get this, come in close. Steve Harvey, back in his early years, for three straight 365 days in a row, he was homeless. I bet you had never known that unless you were one of the million and a half people who had already seen the story about that. If you want to know exactly why he was homeless and how he got out of that, stick around on today's episode of Stories with Grady. Hello friends, welcome to Stories with Grady where I A. Share stories about celebrities, B. Tell wacky stories from my own life, and C. Tell your weird stories that you have to share with the world. If you have any weird stories, feel free to email me below at storieswithgrady at gmail.com. And if I really, really, really like your story, I might share it on a YouTube episode. But if not, at least we both have this Steve Harvey video to love. If you have no stories, but if you really like stories, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below in order to get all of the updates for when each story of mine and yours and Steve Harvey's comes out into your feed. All right, so let's get to Steve Harvey. This man, this myth, this legend, back in the day was not necessarily always a stand-up comedian. No, before he was a stand-up comedian, he had multiple jobs. He tried to be a boxer, he tried to be an auto worker, he tried to be an insurance salesman, he tried to be a carpet cleaner, he tried to be a mailman, he tried to be all of these things, but did he really want to be any of these things? No, he had a big dream. Roderick Stephen Harvey, which is his actual name, got a big high on life when he did a stand-up comedy routine and he said, this is exactly what I wanna do for the rest of my life. Stevie Boy already had a family, he already had some kids. Stevie Boy set out on his career path and he said, I'm going to make this work no matter what. And the thing is, when you wanna be a stand-up comedian but no one's actually paying you, it doesn't really work out too well. So Stevie Boy was a salesman, but he walked away from a salesman job in order to be a comedian. Whatever money he did have that was coming in was actually going out because he had to help support his wife and his three kids who he wasn't necessarily with. So Steve Harvey was homeless and surviving on less than $50 a week sometimes. He was living in his vehicle. It was a 1976 Ford, and I'd be kidding you if I knew anything about what the heck a 1976 Ford looks like. But I can imagine it's probably not as glorious as his house now. My research tells me that Steve Harvey was not only showering at gym facilities, but he was showering at gas stations, which I'm not quite sure how someone showers at a gas station if they're not showering themselves in gasoline, but supposedly Steve Harvey found a way to shower at a gas station. So imagine you're living in your car for a week. All right, that kind of sucks. But then imagine living in your car for three stinking whole years. All right, that's pretty, pretty incredible all because you're trying to pursue a dream that you have no idea if it's gonna work out. Literally, Steve Harvey had to say, I think I am funny enough to risk my whole well-being in order to make people laugh. And the thing is, he almost gave up. He almost said, I can't do this. He almost got a normal job again as a professional boxer or whatever he wanted to do, which, like I said, hadn't worked out for him, but something had stopped him. He says that he heard a voice saying, if you keep going, I'm going to take you to places that you have never been. So on the verge of giving up, he got a phone call saying, hey, we want you to do a stand-up comedy set here at the Apollo. We've heard you do some good work. And the sad thing is, 
He was in one state, that was in another state, and he had literally zilch money to get there. He had literally no idea what to do. And so he was confused, he was conflicted. He's like, maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't actually go into comedy because I'm literally here without any resources to get to where I need to be. But then he got another call. And someone local around him had said, hey, we want you to do a stand-up comedy set here at a club, and we're willing to pay you roughly $50 for that night. And he's like, sure, I'll do it. So he drives over there, does the show, and it goes so well that the person at this place says, hey, we're gonna offer you to do two more nights and we'll pay you 50 more bucks for each night. I might have the 50 bucks wrong, but you get the idea. And so now Steve Harvey was a man on a mission. He's like, all right, I have enough finances to get out to the show at the Apollo and potentially kickstart my career. He's like, all right, maybe I can do this. And so he gets on a $99 round trip flight and he flies out to where the Apollo was located. But like I said, he's homeless and now he doesn't have his 1976 Ford in order to sleep in. So where the heck is he gonna sleep? So he goes to the Apollo, the place he's going to be performing the next day and he goes in and he says, hey, I'm a performer here. Can I actually sleep here for the night? And the security guard is like, I don't think so. And Steve Harvey's like, please, 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 please. And so the security guard is like, well, since you said please, sure, we'll do that. He says, but when you go upstairs and sleep on level XYZ, you can't come back down till the morning. And Steve Harvey, the man, the myth, the legend, at three in the morning was so hungry, poor guy. He comes down and the security guard is like, what are you doing? Are you serious? Why are you down here? And Steve Harvey says, I really need some KFC. I'm super hungry. And so the security guard says, if you're not back in like 20 minutes, I'm gonna close out the doors and I'm not gonna let you back in. So Steve Harvey dashes out, he gets some KFC, comes back, now he's set to go. Pure fuel! Pure fuel! So throughout the next day, all these performers start showing up. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is there. Remember, Steve Harvey is still a nobody. No one knows his name. And guess what? This was back in the day when pretty much no one knew who Dwayne The Rock Johnson was, okay? Guess who else shows up for this night? Jamie Foxx shows up. And this was before anyone knew who Jamie Foxx was. So Jamie Foxx shows up for the performance. And Steve Harvey is nervous. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm the lowest of these nobodies and no one knows who I am. And so he's pretty jittery because his future career is on the line. This is his shot. So the night of the performance comes, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, you know, big, bulky, strong guy. He goes out there, gives his performance, and he gets booed off stage, which sucks. Not only for Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but for Steve Harvey, who's standing back there. He's like, crap, this is a really tough crowd. Then Jamie Foxx goes out there, and Jamie Foxx is getting booed. And Steve Harvey's back there biting his nails. He's like, oh no, Jamie Foxx out there, he's pretty funny. Even though most people don't know who he is, he's still pretty funny. He's getting booed. Steve Harvey's like, oh great, I'm next. Not only does he have to follow good performances that got booed, he has to follow these good performances and hope he doesn't get booed. So Steve Harvey goes out there, he's probably sweating, his future career is on the line, and he stands up in front of everyone. He starts making a joke about an eye. And if you wanna see how he does his joke, you can click the link below where Steve Harvey tells the story that I'm telling you right now. I had wrote this joke. Mike Tyson had got in a fight in Harlem with this heavyweight named Mitch Green. Mike Tyson had hit the dude in the eye in the store. Now he was on the news, his eye was swollen. So the joke I wrote was, they was interviewing Mitch Green and he was telling everybody what happened, but his eye took over the interview. And I wrote this joke that his eye started talking and was just, I tell you what happened. The heavyweight champ's fist is coming towards my face. I just say, Lord, Lord, Lord. And I wrote this whole joke about this dude's eyeball talking. And when the punch came, ah, and all this here. But as Steve Harvey is making this joke about the eye, all of a sudden the crowd starts laughing and laughing and laughing. And suddenly Steve Harvey's up there on stage and he gets a standing ovation from everyone in the crowd. And everyone's going wild about Steve Harvey. And suddenly Steve Harvey in one night went from a homeless man who was reliant on KFC at three in the morning to getting paid in one night close to a thousand dollars, allowing him to have a little bit more cha-ching in his pocket to do the things that he loved. When Steve Harvey tells the truth behind the story, the truth about his origins, the truth about how he got started, the truth about his career and how it all began, 
He tells this story in order to encourage people that they can do the same thing, that they can apply themselves, but not everything is easy, not everything comes simple, and sometimes you have to sacrifice in order to get the success that you're pushing for. A lot of people probably viewed to see Harvey as an overnight success. He went from being a nobody on that stage to all of a sudden being one of the funniest people in the world because eventually he got a position as a host for some of these Apollo events. But what a lot of people don't recognize and understand is that Steve Harvey went through three long years where he was practically getting nothing for the effort that he was putting in. And the moral of the story is pretty simple. If you want to be successful, get KFC. That's the only way to become finger licking good. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. Comment below to tell me what you think about Steve Harvey or to tell me your favorite Steve Harvey moment. Like this video if you like Steve Harvey, and I look forward to telling you more stories in my next videos. Adios, story lovers.